Hey, my people, my energy levels are still really high. We just finished the 14 hour live long broadcast of Final Fantasy 14. And I'm super hyped to say in this video, we'll be recapping the segment that I'm looking forward to the most this week. Hiro Nobu Sakaguchi, the creator of Final Fantasy, the original OG Final Fantasy series, sat down with Yoshipi live in person to have a chat about Final Fantasy 14. I've been waiting for this day for the longest time ever since these two legends spoke at TGS Tokyo Game Show, the previous Tokyo Game Show, and there was such a wholesome conversation and now they're gonna focus only on 14 and Sakaguchi's adventures and thoughts. This is really the best timeline because Sakaguchi, when he created, you know, Final Fantasy 1, did his work all the way to Final Fantasy 10, did he ever imagine that Final Fantasy one day would be made into a successful MMORPG? Probably not, but to be able to see his creations in-game, experience his creations in-game, through Yoshipi's brilliance and genius, that's just wholesome as hell. Their entire conversation was in Japanese, so a huge shout out to Iluna and Miuna of the 14 Discord for transcribing. And before we start, if you like my content coverage on Final Fantasy 14, do subscribe to the channel, that will mean a lot to me. And with that, let's get started. So Sakaguchi, the legend himself, actually opened up the segment by gifting Yoshipi bottles of wine that they will actually have together. And I actually love this really good moment on the stream where they're just sharing wine and talking about MMORPGs. And I wish, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road, I'm able to sit down with, you know, friends of mine and just basically share wine and talk about the video games that we used to play and what we are currently playing. This has seriously reignited my passion for potentially one day and I dream of doing this, doing a podcast and I don't know on what, but I think it's kind of cool to just sit down with friends and talk about video games. And these two men are living the dream here. And so the conversation starts with Yoshipi and team asking Sakaguchi-san how has he been enjoying Final Fantasy XIV, what has he been up to? And for those of you who have missed it, I covered Sakaguchi's entire journey through the MSQs. He didn't have a VOD or playthrough, but he tweeted out every single moment, significant moments of his MSQs. There's a playlist here that I'll link in the pinned comments if you want to follow his journey. But more recently, following Sakaguchi's Twitter, I know he's been very deep into Savage. He's been doing crafting under the branded goods named of Saka Gucci, obviously a pun on the word, the Gucci fashion brand. But yeah, crazily enough, when we start this conversation, think about this. Sakaguchi-san is now the warrior of light in 14. Warrior of Light is something that Hiro Nobu Sakaguchi conceptualized and now he's playing the role of that while Yoshi P is the game developer. It's crazy, crazy ass timeline. And the god gamer himself, Hiro Nobu Sakaguchi, revealed that he has recently beat P7S and he's currently working on P8S. If you folks don't follow this guy on Twitter, he is leading the ideal life of a gamer. He's retired, he lives in Hawaii, he goes on morning walks, he looks at people surfing at night, he has yakiniku and then he plays and he raids at night. It's super wholesome. If you need inspiration in life, follow his Twitter account. I don't know why I'm doing free advertising for him, but I just love to spend so much. And for you, the viewer out there, I'm sure he also changed your life, right? He made Final Fantasy possible, and it's because of Final Fantasy you and I are sharing this moment right now. And Sakaguchi revealed that initially when he first started 14, a lot of people thought that, you know, he would just dabble in 14 as a, oh, let me just check out the game. And a lot of people didn't expect Sakaguchi to actually stay on in the game for so long. Because he's so busy with life, right? He still runs his own game development company. So everyone thought that given how busy this man is, he probably doesn't have time to play another MMORPG. But he said he just kept on going and he's been enjoying his life as a warrior of light in 14. And Sakaguchi reviewed, well, in raids, he's been playing the off tank. So for you off tanks out there, know that the man who created Final Fantasy is playing your role. And Sakaguchi is so hardcore, so serious about raiding in Final Fantasy 14. He said that he was not satisfied with a normal 16 by 9 monitor. He wanted a white screen monitor because for the people who don't know, when you raid in 14, a white screen monitor does give you a wider POV. So visually, it does allow you to have a broader peripheral vision. But when you read statements like that, you know Sakaguchi is a gamer at heart. He understands what's important. Min-maxing everything in a game. The quintessential gamer experience. And Yoshipi asked him, you know, how was that going? And Sakaguchi said that, you know, he's turning 60 soon, but he doesn't find it stressful at all to be raiding, he's enjoying his time, and he's taking things at his own pace. He even said that recently he's been thinking about challenging, you know, the savage raiding and some of the PvE content using a different type of controller. For example, using a dance mat or a foot paddle, which he and Yoshipi basically joked and shared some good laughs about. And Sakaguchi commented that he recently even made friends with a 14 multi-boxer, someone who plays 24 Final Fantasy 14 characters at the same time. This is the same guy who appeared at Sakaguchi's uh, one-year anniversary celebration in the game, where he showed up with characters with glamours from Final Fantasy 1 all the way to Final Fantasy 15, if I'm not wrong. To which Yoshibi said that he's so amazed that, you know, there's so many people out there who enjoys Final Fantasy 14 in different ways from what people normally envision. Like they think an MMORPG is simply sitting down and playing, you know, raiding and endgame, but you know, all these 
these players, they continue to surprise Yoshi P. Specifically referencing to the guy who multiboxed 24 characters, Yoshi P say he's aware of the person and he's been following his progress through socials. The two titans of the industry then shifted their focus to their earlier days, their first interaction with MMORPGs. And I'm sure for some of you out there, it's the same for you, EverQuest. The OG MMO experience, back in the day of download modems and ADSL modems. And Sakaguchi shared that when he first played EverQuest, it was actually in the midst of Final Fantasy XI development stages. And two of them basically reminisced about how they started their MMORPG genre in EverQuest, which is a Western MMO. And moving off tangent to the EverQuest conversation, they talked about, you know, Sakaguchi's transition into Final Fantasy XIV. And Sakaguchi said that actually, you know, looking back, it was a very, very smooth experience, very smooth onboarding experience as a sprout in Final Fantasy XIV. Sakaguchi-san said he felt no difficulty in terms of any form of communication issues within the game. In fact, he definitely felt that, you know, Final Fantasy XIV was a very story-based MMORPG that kind of played like a standalone single-player game, which I think is a sentiment a lot of us share because the MSQs is basically the quintessential experience of Final Fantasy XIV. The conversation then shifted into Sakaguchi-san's recent experiences and Patch 6.2. I guess Yoshibi also wants customer feedback here. But more importantly, we all know Patch 6.2 was heavily referencing Final Fantasy IV, a Sakaguchi Sakaguchi-san creation, right? The fourth series that he created. And Sakaguchi-san gushed about how much he loves, you know, Final Fantasy XIV's integration and references in the XIV's new patch. And Sakaguchi-san says that when he looks at things like that, he doesn't just only feel happy, there's a warm, fuzzy feeling inside his heart when he sees his original creations being materialized in an MMORPG that he's actually playing now. I can only imagine his emotions, but even I am getting excited just talking about it. And it's very clear that the OG Final Fantasy creations are, you know, plays a very big role in his heart these days. He also praised Yoshi P for the design of Ilmor in Shadowbringers. And he said that the Ilmor city design is such an iconic Amano design. And if you guys don't know who Yoshitaka Amano is, he's been working with Sakaguchi in the past with a lot of the key art for Final Fantasy series a very key cornerstone of the Final Fantasy creation team, essentially. Sakaguchi then commented to say that, you know, he sees Final Fantasy XIV as a medium, as a way for him to just journey through time, look back in time in terms of his creations that he created in the past, and simply enjoy his works from a different perspective, a different take under Yoshi P. And Yoshi P acknowledged that, he said that's great because, you know, they envisioned XIV as a theme park for Final Fantasy. A theme park that is open to the new players who don't know what Final Fantasy is, the veteran players who knew what Final Fantasy is, making appeal to a broad base of audience as far as possible. And Yoshi P said they're very careful in terms of respecting, you know, the old Final Fantasy brand and franchise. Yoshi P said there are many elements that's integrated into 14 these days. They actually take advice from veteran staff members. For example, Gaia's design for Shadowbringers is actually designed by a Final Fantasy veteran Tetsuya Nomura. The two industry legends also commented on, I think, what is a very hot topic for Square Enix and Final Fantasy these days. NFTs and the metaverse, and you know, I think most of the Final Fantasy 14 audience are very against NFTs. There was a big hoo-ha about it. And Yoshi P came on air clarifying in one of the producer live letters that he has no intentions to add NFTs to Final Fantasy 14. To which Sakaguchi-san said pretty bluntly that he thinks that the metaverse, the whole idea of metaverse is actually conceptualized for profit. And I don't think he said it explicitly, but I think what he was trying to imply here is that the metaverse itself wasn't set up to provide like the best gaming experience to gamers. So the motivation itself came from a different place, from a place of money and profits. And maybe what he's trying to say is he's questioning the implications of this. Because these are two OG game developers, Yoshi P and Sakaguchi-san, who believes that create a product, a good game, a good gaming experience, and people will come. It's kind of like the movie The Fuel of Dreams. Build it and they will come. But if it's built for profit and not from pure-hearted intention of letting players enjoy themselves in the game, people can feel it. That's actually my own interpretation. Sakaguchi didn't say that in verbatim, but that's what I think he meant. And Yoshi P also took the opportunity to say again and reiterate again that Final Fantasy XIV doesn't gel well with, you know, NFT and blockchain technology. And he has already previously said that they wouldn't do it, so they wouldn't do it. Sakaguchi-san also took the opportunity to make a request to Yoshi P for 14 in-game features. And he says he wants a Kappa costume, a Kappa glamour set. I'm sure you folks know there's a frog costume in the game and he's now requesting for a Kappa costume. Now this Kappa is not to be confused with, you know, the Twitch icon Kappa, but Kappa in Japanese basically refers to an imp. And Yoshi P said his team would definitely look into this request, they'll take note of this. Naturally, Sakaguchi is his senpai, right? His uh, senior, the person who made Final Fantasy possible. So I'm sure he's showing some respect here. And since they're on the topic of minions, Yoshi P also slipped in a response to say that in patch 6.3, we'll see a new Kogi minion. So if you folks don't know, the Kogi mount was extremely popular. I think it's one of the first few times I've seen something on the Mock Station outsell Fantasias. 
So yeah, the Kogi minion is coming in 6.3, folks. And Sakaguchi-san also commented that he found it very interesting that there's different cultures on different 14 servers. And Sakaguchi then moved on to praise 14 for how little bugs 14 actually has. And Sakaguchi-san says that this is a pet peeve of his. When he plays a new game, he's always very focused on quality assurance. And you try and spot all the different bugs in the game. I think this is a professional hazard, of course. And Foxconn also echoes this sentiment on the broadcast. He says that, you know, he used to play Ultima online another very OG MMORPG. But then shortly after when he joined you know, Square Enix on the 14 team, he's come to realize that whatever is being done by the team does have very little bugs compared to you know, other video games. And again, this is something that I think a lot of us take for granted. It's always good to remind ourselves how far 14 has come. It's easy to complain about you know, the shortcomings of 14, but also keep in mind how far the game has actually come. Sakaguchi and Yoshi P then started talking about how impressed they are with the general rating population of 14, and the people who take 14 rating very seriously, the high-end progression part of the game very seriously. They know how to min-max every little thing, timing of buff, buff windows, and they pretty much said it's so amazing to see all these uh, top-end players take the game so seriously. They even commented that some players seem to even know more than the developers themselves, which is really pretty awesome. And the two gentlemen then basically randomly jumped to various different topics as, you know, you would imagine between two very good friends. They covered a lot of things under the sun, including, you know, their experiences flying on airplanes these days, Sakaguchi's life in Hawaii, you know, Eastern versus Western cultures when they meet people in person, a lot of the random musings which I wouldn't cover for the purpose of this video, but the way they wrapped it up was really wholesome. So Foxconn basically asked Yoshi P, given that Sakaguchi made a request to Yoshi P himself to say, can you please make a kappa costume? Is there any request for Yoshi P to Sakaguchi in return? And Yoshi P says that honestly, you can't ask for anything more. The fact that Sakaguchi-san, his senpai, his senior, right, played the game Final Fantasy XIV and praised the game, that's actually pretty much all he can ask for. And he said, if he really wanted to make a request, that would be if he ever visits Hawaii, for Sakaguchi-san to basically host him and show him around. And as they move towards the end of the broadcast, Yoshibi then basically gave a joking warning to Sakaguchi to say, hey Sakaguchi-san, if you want to be involved in Final Fantasy XIV fanfares in the future and events, just know that the fans have the expectations of you cosplaying as someone from 14, I guess. And Sakaguchi says, well, more than that, he wants to actually sing at a fanfest and Yoshi P told his team to write it down and they'll try and get Sakaguchi to sing at the next fanfest. And Yoshi P gave the final, final words for the 14-hour broadcast wrap-up and I want to read out this paragraph to you because I think it really is so wholesome. It really warms my heart and I feel it's so wholesome and I wish in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road, I'll still be in front of my computer talking to you folks in front of the monitor, sharing our love or passion about video games because this is what Yoshi P said in summary. Yoshi P apologizes that the segment was largely between two old men talking and he comments about how life could be wonderful and good things can happen if one keeps living and hope that players can take their time and enjoy their life. And if Sakaguchi-san himself can enjoy it and have so much fun in 14, he hopes that other players can basically take their time and enjoy the journey too. And last but not least, hopefully the journey never ends and the players will continue to enjoy the journey. And that, ladies and gentlemen, sums up the most wholesome conversation I've ever seen live for a Final Fantasy XIV broadcast. Love these two men to bits. Made such a big impact in my life. I have nothing but gratitude for these two people. And that's just such an amazing way to wrap up the entire broadcast. And so folks, that wraps up this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Isn't this the best segment and best timeline we're living in? With that said, if you like my content coverage in this video for Final Fantasy XIV, do subscribe to the channel. That will really, really mean the world to me. I stream on Twitch, so feel free to swing by to say hello and hang out. Last but not least, if you missed my recap of the producer life letter that was part of the 14th hour broadcast, you can check out the video in the middle of the screen here. That's everything you need to know. Take care and I'll see you real soon.